What is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? Today, I am here to spread more negativity. <laughs> it's what I do. Uh, I want to preface this by saying that I am in no way a complete believer in every point I'm about to make. I am in no way convinced of my correctness that there's no counter arguments to be made and that is why I'm doing this is so hopefully I can get some counterpoints or some people can you know highlight their own experiences that may just completely contradict anything I'm about to say I mean anything that you have please tell me because I this is not meant to just be like me talking to you I want to hear your thoughts on it as well so Basically, I, I think this game, it's been stated time and time again that both this game and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle and a lot of games prior to this were trying to make it more accessible. This system is here in order to help newer players that may not be fighting game fans get acclimated to the game. And my problem with that statement, and this is kind of a good segue into my first point, which is my major problem with the game is that everything in the game is too safe. There's not a whole lot of risk inherent in your actions. And the reason why I say that is because... So there are certain systems in the game that are almost solely present for people who don't want to learn. And by using these systems, they then kind of won't learn. And so there's a lot of hatred that's spewed towards any co any game that has an auto combo system in it which i don't really understand myself because they're not an issue right like they're not something that you just get hit by and you lose the game because of it you know it's it's it is kind of the mark if somebody's leaning on it it is the mark of somebody who's not very good at the game and in general it's going to give you free easy wins but my issue with the auto combo system itself is that i went through and i tested every single auto combo string from the light version, I kind of forgot that there were two versions of it, so I went back and I did a very, very minute amount of testing. I forgot there were two auto combo strings, right? You can get one. Technically, you can get one from heavy too, but that doesn't really count. Um, you get one. You get one from light, which actually gives you a unique move that, as I, as far as I'm aware, every single character, the third move of the L combo string is a unique launcher that they can't access anywhere else, which ha is consistent with like how Persona 4 Arena worked, whatever. Um, I forgot when I was doing this that there was a medium version of it as well, but the medium version is very simple. It's literally just 5M, 2M, some special move, whatever special move they decided to use, into a super. That's all that it is. And if it's in a block string, did I even mention that my big problem with it is that auto combos are all safe? They're all safe. 100% safe on block. There are only two exceptions to that. Cells and Android 16s. Yes, Cell and Android 16. They are the only exceptions, and that's because their third unique hit is actually a grab. And so it, if they're in block stun, it just whiffs, and so you can whiff punish them for it. But it's not really, you know, it's not kind of the same thing. It's a little bit of an exception, and there are two other exceptions to this rule as well, in that you have Goku Black, or Goku Black, you have Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, the dumbest fucking name I've ever heard in my goddamn life, uh, Goku and Beerus. Both of them have very, very slow moves as their third move. Beerus does a cross-up, which you can just punch him in the mouth out of. And uh, Goku Blue does this incredibly slow overhead animation that you can hit him out of as well. And so those are the kind of exceptions to the rule. But other than that, every single character's L auto combo string is safe on block. It's not plus, thank the lord above, because that would be absolutely ridiculous. Or neutral, even. Like, if they press a button afterward, if you both press a button... As early as each of you possibly can, you're going to beat whatever button. Well, I shouldn't say whatever button. Like, if you press your slowest button versus their light button, you're going to lose. That's how frame data works. But if you both press 5L as quickly as possible um, for your character once they recover, your, your L is going to win. So... It's not a huge deal because they do lose offensive pressure. But when you're analyzing it from the point of a low-level match... Of a place where somebody may have the potential to learn better. Somebody may learn their lesson if they just keep on mashing on this auto combo string. And every single time they get punched in the mouth and they get punished for it, they're going to come to that realization of, oh shit, alright, I need to stop doing this. Um, I need to find something better. How am I really supposed to play this game so I can stop getting hit, right? It kind of it promotes that thought process, which 
inevitably is going to lead them down a road of improving and getting better and understanding more about the game. Whereas, when every single goddamn string is safe, they don't learn anything. And again, when you're at a low-level match, people are not going to be on point with their punishes. So there is, it's essentially going to become a coin flip of who hits who, and so they just see, like, well, 50% of the time here, I hit them afterwards anyway, so why not just keep hitting this button? It's just, it's a bad system to be in place, and, again, I kind of forgot to, um, go over all the medium versions of it, but it's very simple. Like I said, the entire medium auto combo is 5M, 2M, special move, super move. If you're blocking, it will automatically stop at the 2M. It will not do the special move, which I don't really understand why it doesn't do that. But anyway, it stops at the 2M. So if a character has a punishable 2M, then technically it's punishable. That That's my great expertise on the matter. But it really did just irritate me when I found out that all the auto combos are safe on block. Because again, it just promotes this... It's a non-issue for anybody that already isn't using auto combos to begin with. And they're not going to be subjected to it in the first place. And it's a huge issue at the lowest level because, again, they see that afterwards, everything's hunky-dory, nothing particularly bad happens, so fuck it. Just lean on it. There's no need to learn anything new, right? So that's kind of my big issue in general with this game, is that everything, not just auto combos, everything is just too safe. There's so little risk from an offensive standpoint. One big aspect of this is assists now obviously every crossover game has had assists they allow you to do some incredibly dirty shit but to my knowledge this is the first crossover game that allows you to call assists pretty much whenever like it does as long as they're not on cooldown obviously that is the one limiter to assists is that they do have a, a natural cooldown after you call them but you can call them during any of your normals during any of your special moves, during whatever height on screen you're at, it doesn't matter if you're at super jump height, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of, you know, like a launch, if you're in the middle of a special move, you're in the middle of a super move, it doesn't matter, as long as you are not stuck in a cinematic, which, ironically enough, you can actually learn pretty easily during story mode, which supers qualify as a cinematic, because if you play story mode, there is a power-up in there called health recovery, and basically what it does, it, it almost acts like you have Sparking Blast active all the time, except it doesn't just recover blue health, it recovers your health no matter what. And so you can actually find out which supers are quote-unquote cinematic and which aren't, because the health recovery will freeze. But it's very inconsistent. Like, there are things that you would think would qualify as a cinematic, for instance, 16's level 3. When he pulls his arm, when he pulls his hands off, shoots, you know pushes his uh, hands down and just shoots you into the ground, right? You would think, ultimately, until you start getting hit, that would be considered a cinematic. You would be incorrect. You recover health during the entire thing. But it's, it's very strange, and so you can learn through that. But that means, as far as I am aware, as far as I can tell from this game, as long as you are not stuck in that sort of cinematic, you can call an assist, no matter what. And so, essentially, you the very, very few things in the game that are unsafe can now be made safe because there is no limit to when you can call an assist. That's problematic because it does create this very large loophole in terms of, like, you can have just the most unsafe pressure in the world and it doesn't matter because your assist will always have your back. That's a problem, I feel. Like, every other game that I've played, I shouldn't say every other game, I played Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <laughs> um, but they prevent you. You can't call assists in the middle of special moves. You can't call assists if you're in the middle of a launch, which does prevent somewhat certain weird combos. It doesn't matter. They found weird combos anyway. Um, but yeah, there is a limit to when you can call assists. And so it does kind of make it so that there is some form of commitment necessary to your offense if you want to continue it. Whereas... And some form of risk inherent if you want to run certain kinds of mix-up. Whereas here, that risk is not present. Um, Super Dash. Vanish. Both mechanics that are not punishable. Whether or not they should be, I don't know. That's not up to me. I mean, so with Super Dash, obviously it's an awkward scenario. Because you can 2H it on reaction a lot of the time. Not all the time. There are certain ranges where you just there's no possibility for reaction at that point in time. And you're just going to have to hold that. 
And obviously, it's not plus on block, so you will you do have the opportunity to try to hit them out of it uh, if they try to do something afterwards. But it is not punishable. And then you have vanish, which again that one's a, that one's an awkward scenario, right? Because vanish number one, which I'm gonna touch on again later. You can't follow up off of it unless you're in the middle of sparking blast and you can like cancel. I'm not entirely sure how it works. I do need to sit down and figure. I think if you just hold the buttons, uh, the attack will not come out in sparking blast and you can just throw out a normal instead and then you can get a full combo off of it. But that's only in sparking blast. Otherwise, you never get the wall bounce unless you're in the middle of a combo. And weirdly enough, you know what? I won't talk about it. You know what? I will. I'm just a brief little thing. I don't understand how it's like, unless you have just, unless you cancel a move into Vanish, you don't get the wall bounce even if you're in the middle of a combo. It's very strange. The timing is weird and I don't understand it because it would promote certain positionings that would benefit combos better if you could, you know, kind of time it so, you know, maybe they've fallen a little bit further or whatever, but for some fucking reason, you just don't get the wall bounce unless you have hit the opponent within like the last 0.2 seconds. It's very strange. Um... So that's kind of the weird thing is like, yeah, okay, it's not punishable, but it costs a meter, and if it did hit, what the fuck were they going to get out of it anyway? Uh, so that that's kind of a weird gray area. But again, it is safe if you uh, call it out. And apparently there are certain ranges or like certain heights that it becomes plus at. I don't know. I've heard that. I don't know if it's true. I haven't tested it myself. I'm too lazy. Uh, what else? So basically the reason why this is a problem isn't necessarily for all this thing like all this stuff being safe isn't necessarily an issue it's the fact that you don't have a push block to just say all right get the fuck off me reset neutral let's start again fuck your block string right that's the big thing now obviously you do have 4s but you can't do it when you're in block stun and it's more and more people are figuring out there are a lot of setups which allow you to put somebody in damn near permanent block stun. And then your only answer for that at that point is to just guard cancel out. And even then, as far as I'm aware, that can be baited and I shouldn't say as far as I'm aware. That can be baited and punished. So it's not exactly a great option. Like the higher level you get, or the more experienced people get, I feel, and plus the higher level people get. That is something that's going to wind up getting punished on a regular basis if people are leaning on it. And people are just going to figure out better and tighter block strings that are, that are going to almost require it to get out of it to prevent just getting mixed up into oblivion. All of this would be alleviated if the game would just put in a proper push block. If 4S had been a proper push block from the start, which, in my opinion, it should be. So... That's the big thing. It's not necessarily a, an issue that all of these things are safe. The issue comes from the fact that all of these things are safe and there's no real way to deal with it. That is my big problem. And like like I said, just a simple push block would fix all, everything I just talked about. Everything. So, it, that's very strange. And so, essentially, that's kind of why I... Uh, what was that? What was that? That's why I kind of I feel like if you're gonna try to create a properly competitive, lasting fighting game, there needs to be an element of risk inherent to it all because that's what creates hype. People going for things that are just insane and crazy, but you know what? There's not much left to lose here. They they have to try something to make this work. And then when it doesn't work, you get a huge punishment. And, you know, you feel that in your gut. Like, oh, man, that sucks. I respect that he went for that. There was a lot of risk there, but he could have won the match off of it. I respect the hell out of that. Versus when it does pay off, the fucking room explodes. Everybody loses their shit. That's, the, that's like, half the reason why people go to tournaments in the first place. Is for that hype. Is for that energy. And when you have a game that appears to be so averse to risk, that's not present. Like, right now, a lot of people are popping off, but it's because this game looks very, very flashy. In motion, this game looks amazing. But if you understand what's going on, like, if you have any kind of... I saw people popping off on, like, the simplest hit stuff I've ever seen in my life. But people were going nuts because hit looks fucking cool. There's no doubt about that. But it's like, if you pick up the character and you try to play him, five minutes later, you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be doing everything that's happening on screen yourself. And so, uh, we'll see whether or not this continues further on down the line and people understand the game better and understand that, oh, that actually wasn't 
as cool as I thought it was. It's actually very easy, and there's really no issue to it whatsoever. Shit. So we'll see how that goes. That's my that's my concern about it, is that once people do understand the game and understand what's going on, they're going to realize, like, oh, there was absolutely, like, that's the only way that could have gone. Nothing differently could have happened. I thought that looked cool originally. It's actually not that damn cool, <laughs> which is a fucking shame. Um, second thing, the DHC system, which I still have not bothered to learn the proper name of. I've originally thought it was just called, like, Super Change or Super Tag or something like that. I don't think that's it. But basically, when you use a super as one character, and then you call in the next character to use another super, it's terrible. It's terrible. There is almost, there's so little synergy between a lot of the characters that it blows my mind. For instance, Tien is actually, I think, the absolute best case scenario. Honestly, it might be a little bit broken how he works. <laughs> In conjunction with everybody else. Um, because if you have not played TN, his level 1 is, what's it called, like, tri-beam attack or whatever. If you are on the, if, not even DHC and into it, if you use it normally when you're on the ground, he automatically puts himself in a vertical position necessary. Well, I should actually talk about how the super actually works. It goes down in a, um, a, a diagonal trajectory. Downward. Yep, explain that really well. Think of it like a triangle. <laughs> he shoots downward in a diagonal fashion, and it is, it's not guaranteed to hit. You can make it miss, but if you initiate that super on the ground, he automatically teleports to the vertical area necessary to make sure that the attack hits. For some reason, this doesn't happen if you use it in the air. You have to aim it yourself if you try to use it in the air. But if you're on the ground when you start it, again, he just teleports to wherever the hell he needs to be. That's exactly how it works as well if you DHC into him. He will automatically guarantee that the move will hit. Now here's the kicker on top of it. That move also forces a hard knockdown. It's basically impossible to not be able to follow that up with another super with another character. It is, I feel, the absolute best move in the game to DHC into and DHC out of. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. Now, I don't think every single one should work exactly like that, but there are a shit ton of cases where the character could very well teleport them, do the same thing, just teleport themselves to wherever they need to be to ensure that it hits, and they don't do that. They will put them, as far as I can tell in my experience, they will basically put themselves horizontally uh, on the ground, wherever they need to be, but from a vertical level, they just won't do it. So, like, for instance, Cell's level 1. This big, giant explosion around him. He can use it in the air, he can use it on the ground, he can use it anywhere on the screen. If you DHC into it, or if you DHC away from, let's say, Goku's diagonal Kamehameha, which, you know, shoots them up high into the air, Cell will dash in underneath them, if you cancel into him, and pop his super, but they'll be too far up in the air to get hit by it. That is the case for a lot of these things, where they just don't ever get touched by it. But there's no reason for that. They should still get hit by it. And so it creates this synergistic weirdness that makes certain team compositions unviable for a reason that shouldn't be present. And um, another big case of that is that the cancel window is actually really strict. Where it's like... So, for instance, if you're playing Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which you're going to hear a lot of these parallels, and I apologize if you don't like it, but you got to just deal with it. Um, as long as your character is in the startup of their super, is in the middle of their super, is in recovery from their super. You can DHC away from that at any point in, in that time. At any point in time for the animation of that super, startup, hits, the actual hits themselves, recovery. Any point in time, you can cancel into the next person. As far as I can tell in this game, in my experience, maybe there are exceptions because I have not played every single character to a level of depth that would allow me to definitively say this. But, as far as I can tell, you essentially have until uh, the animation of the super is over to cancel. You cannot wait until afterwards. So this creates this weird kind of scenario where, like, maybe this move causes a hard knockdown, or maybe this move, they fall down for quite a bit, uh, and then they do tech in the air, but, you know, again, they lose a lot of the height they initially had while you're still in recovery from your own super, and you can't cancel during that window. So, these scenarios that if that was possible, if the window was extended a bit further to allow you to cancel later on, rather than having to do it in the middle of the animation, there's no other choice, 
that a certain amount of that synergy would come back. But that's not how it works. And so there's just a lot of little things inherent that really irk me about it. And I do need to look into it a bit further. Because originally one of the other negatives was that you don't have a choice in what super the character does when they come in, right? But I think if you time it properly, you can do the motion into um, any of the other character supers. So I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna that's something I'm gonna have to test out myself. So I don't really want to highlight it. I do just want to mention it just in case that winds up not being possible. Because I I think it might be like certain supers allow you to do it, but certain others don't. I I don't know how it works. I'm like I said, I'm gonna need to test it out. Um, I think that's it in regard to the. DHC stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Alright, so. Let's talk about assists. After I just trashed on them. For a little bit. For being too... Uh, being able to call them out in too many different scenarios. They need to be more limited. But, in the other cases, assists are, in fact, actually too limited. Because you only have one per character. I don't understand why they did this. It's not like it's hard to create... I mean, every single character basically has three special moves, right? So why not just do three assists for every character? Now, there are some exceptions to that, right? Like, for instance, 16. He has three special moves. He has the anti-air grab, he has the normal grab, and he has um, his special, which is his actual assist, his uh, S, his key charge, key blast, whatever the fuck. Um, that's all he has, right? You don't want to give a character a command grab assist. That is a terrible idea, because that gives every character in the cast a command grab, we don't need that. Cell already has a command grab, and that's ridiculous. Think of every character in the game on a command grab. It would suck. <laughs> we would all be crying. Uh, so, you know, you don't need that. But then you look at it. Okay, look, let me check out the rest of his moveset. What else has he got? Oh, you know what? His 5SS is actually perfect for this. You know, when he... The two rocket punches. That would be a perfect assist. Even maybe his shoulder tackle, although his shoulder tackle is a bit too... Uh, Cookie cutter, I guess, would be the right way to say it. Like, I mean, there are a lot of already of moves already in the game that are like four charge moves. We don't need more. Ginyu's assist is a perfect example of it. Um, but it's just the reason why I say that is because there are. It's way too easy to look at all these assists and be like, "Yep, that one sucks. That one sucks. Nobody wants to use that. Nobody wants to use that. Everybody wants to use those, right?" And when I say those, I mean beam assists. <laughs> they are by far the front runners. For the best in the game. Now, I will say, Vegeta, not technically a beam assist. I firmly believe he has the single best assist in the game. It is so good in terms of its all-encompassing wonderfulness that I'm even tempted to use Vegeta on my team. Because right now, I don't really have a good assist on my team. For those of you that may not be aware, I'm rolling Hit Tien Beerus. Hit's assist is balls for anything but combos. Tien has probably the worst beam in the game. And, uh, Beerus' assist is actually pretty damn good. Because it's a multi-hit, uh, move with plenty, with a large gap between it, which is very good juggle properties. Will also give you plenty of time to run mix-up off of it. In terms of neutral, it's not that great. That fireball's really easy to dodge. But you can still potentially use it in neutral as a kind of way of, like, hey, look out for this. Pay attention to this big, giant, purple ball that's coming at you. Ignore me running across the screen to get in your face, right? So it does have applications in neutral, but I would say that's the weakest aspect of it. And so that's in, in terms of, like, what I'm looking for in assists. How good is it in the middle of block strings to then allow you to run mix-up? How good is it uh, in terms of combo ability to extend your combos? And how good is it in terms of uh, neutral? Will it allow you to get in? Is there any... Uh, you know, what? how does it augment your neutral and doesn't improve it? And so when you look at beam assists, it does all three of these things. When you look at Vegeta's assist, it's the best in the game for mix-up. When you look at Kid Buu's assist, it's amazing for mix-up, shit tier for neutral, probably pretty good for combos, I'm not actually sure, I haven't really tested it out enough, but I do know for mix-up, it's de aside from Vegeta's, it's the best, right? But beam assists and Vegeta's assists, every single, all of them, amazing for neutral beams are better in neutral than vegeta's but the amount of mix-up that you get off of vegeta's assist is insane it's ridiculous it's so good and the combo potential is the best in the game off of both vegeta's the combo potential and the mix-up potential off of vegeta's assist are both the best in the game right now i think and the neutral is yeah just because you can't really hit it you can only hit it if you're like around 75 percent of the screen away or closer 
And it goes diagonally downward, so it's very easy to just hop over it. Unless you're directly in front of it. Oh, I should have mentioned also Oki. That's another thing. I don't, I don't even know why I didn't mention Oki. That's another thing that it, Vegeta's uh, assist excels at. Because a lot of assists have trouble dealing with the upward tech. Vegeta's assist doesn't. Because he starts in the air. <laughs> you're just going to tech straight into those fireballs. Um, so yeah, uh, Vegeta's assist. Very, very good right now. And it makes me want to use the character solely for that assist. Whereas you have other characters like Ginyu. Hit. Um, Gohan, both Gohans, actually, I think both of their assists are pretty bad. Aren't both of the blues? I think they're pretty bad, too. But yeah, you look at these assists, and it's like, alright, what are they useful for? Pretty much nothing except for a potential combo extender, which is the worst kind of assist. Because why use the combo extender assist when you can also have this other assist, which serves that property just as well, if not better, while simultaneously augmenting your offense significantly and giving you far more potential in that arena, right? This would be alleviated somewhat if you could choose between three assists. Now, you're still going to have characters with useless assists, right? For instance, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 again, Wolverine, one of my favorite characters. His assists suck. They were terrible. He was a point character for a reason. He didn't have any good assists. Akuma, he only had one good assist, but it was godlike. Doom. He had three broken-ass tier assists. <laughs> There's still going to be imbalance when you can choose, but the probability of that occurring and the probability of the character that you want to play having a good assist, if you can choose between three of them, is a lot higher. And so, basically, the reason, like, where this all stemmed from, both from the DHC talk and this assist talk, was that I wanted to use, like, a big body team, right? So I was thinking of Majin Buu, Nappa... Um, 16. And maybe Ginyu can be in there, but he's kind of, he's more middle-sized-ish. He's not really big. All of them had really bad synergy, both with their assists and with um, uh, their supers. They just, sometimes they just wouldn't connect. Like, anything into Majin Buu is going to work, because Majin Buu causes, causes that gigantic explosion. Anything into him is going to work. But from him, you're not hitting anything. From Nappa... You're not hitting 16s from 16. Actually, no, 16 into Nappa's works just fine. 16s is good, but he's in a weird position where you have to cancel his early so you don't get full damage if you want to DHC into something else. He's, a, he's in a weird position. But if you want to go into any of their level 3s, it's not going to happen. It just will not happen because every single one of their supers causes something to get knocked up really high in the air, and every single one of their level 3s requires you to be pretty much directly next to somebody. So there's not there's no synergy there, right? That's an issue. Their assists, all three of them, exactly the same assist, pretty much. They all do like a projectile explosion directly in front of them. Not much range on it, not a lot of block stun. It's pretty much only useful as like, alright, let me get one last mix up in here as like while I can. Alright, let me extend this combo really, really awkwardly, and it's probably not gonna work because it's super hard to pick up. But you know what? If you figure out the proper setup, it'll work. That's it. All three of them had pretty much the same exact assist. And Ginyu doesn't help either. Because <laughs> Ginyu just has that sh straightforward shoulder tackle. That shit sucks too. So, I'm looking at that team. You know, I really want to play it. But in terms of... Now, I should mention this. This is all from the standpoint of somebody who's looking at this game competitively. Is this something that I can use at a high level and beat people with? This is not something that applies... To the random online extravaganza that's currently going on. You can pick whoever the hell you want. And if you just get decent at them, you're going to beat the majority of people. That's how online fighting games have always worked. You don't need to be playing, you know, the quote-unquote meta characters. You don't need to be playing S-tiers or even A-tiers. You can make it work on the average level. But, when I'm looking at this game, I am looking at it... And trying to see where it's going to be a year from now. When all the people who mash on auto combos are gone. When all the people who have no neutral aside from Super Dash are long gone. They've gotten 2 h off often enough that they just decided that they don't even like Dragon Ball anymore. And eventually you're going to be left with people who have either become fighting game fans because of this game. Or they've been fighting games for long enough and you know they stuck around and they've delved into it. And they've gotten a lot of depth out of it. So what's it going to look like a year from now, two years from now? 
And that team is not going to work with the game's current system because there just isn't enough, again, there's just not enough synergy. Whereas, think about this, if I had Majin Buu, and I could use, you don't want to give him his 214S as a special move, as, a, as an assist, that would be broken. <laughs> that would be busted as hell. But currently his 236S is his super, oh, you really can't give him his butt stomp either, unless you just forego the anim, the ground, pan, ground pound animation, and you just gave him the flip and the stomp. So actually, Majin Buu's not in a great position overall in terms of being able to figure out a good assist for him, to be honest. Because his cartwheel would be pretty much exactly the same as his 236S. It'd be useful for like one quick mix-up. It'd be useful for combos potentially, but not much else. So Majin Buu is actually kind of in a shit position for that. Ignore him. But 16, like I said, if you could use the Rocket Fists as an assist. Perfect. I basically have a Ghetto Beam assist. It's not great, but hey, it functions. It gives me, it gives me that additional augmentation to my offense, which will help me quite a bit. If you're looking at Nappa, you give him the little, like his charge forward, um, I would say the 236M animation. Like he charges forward and then he just does like a, a hammer fist kind of a deal. You give him that. Maybe even you give him his 214S, which is the armor move. Defensive assist? The only other one of those that uh, is currently in the game is 18s, and I don't actually know how that one functions. Like, I know that it absorbs hits, but I don't know if it absorbs those hits and prevents them from getting through to the other to the point character that i don't know so i don't know if it really qualifies as a point assist as a defensive assist because i don't know if there is actually a defensive property or if it's just like if you hit uh 18 when she's on the screen during her assist you get meter for it i don't really know how it functions uh but there i mean you know having some defensive assists would be good you know, throwing things out, throwing ideas out there. That would be a potential. Because, honestly, all three of these characters are very large, not very mobile. Having a defensive assist available for them would be a wonderful thing, right? So just having those options would be beautiful. But right now, you don't have those options. And so that kind of sucks. And so I can definitely see further down the line, like, everybody's going to be using either Vegeta, Goku Black, Goku. Who else has a really good beam assist? I don't actually know. Does anybody else have a good beam assist? I think that's it, right? Because you have Tien who has Masenko, but again, that's the worst beam assist in the game. Because it's also the only beam assist that is not multi-hitting. And it's also very... It doesn't have a lot of hits. It knocks them up very high. And it also doesn't have a lot of hits done. So it, in from experience, it's very awkward to try to combo off of it. It is possible, but very awkward. I think that's it in terms of beam assists. Huh. That would really suck. If you pretty... Well, I mean, you have D, uh, DLC characters coming out soon, too. I keep trying to call them D... I actually did call them a DHC character on Discord <laughs> earlier, and I was like, wait a minute. That's not an L. <laughs> oh, shit. But, uh, yeah, so I could definitely see people just kind of being pigeonholed into using these characters for their assists because they're just too good not to inevitably once you know again once the competitive level ramps up and people start learning the game more and more people's defenses start getting better because that's the last thing people focus on right everybody right now is trying to find those 100 percent sparking blast combos everybody's trying to find combos where they can use 25 assists in the middle of them and get you know stupid damage that's never going to work out in a real match you have people trying to figure out ridiculous block strings stupid oki all that stuff nobody gives a shit about developing their defense right now eventually they're gonna have to and once we get there that's when we'll actually see true development of the game because like anything's gonna work the first time you see it right hits 2l is gonna hit everybody like 27 times in a row it's just gonna hit everybody until people start recognizing that slow ass animation and being able to differentiate it from his 2m right once that happens who knows where hits gonna be same thing with his cross-ups people are gonna start being able to recognize when those are gonna come out uh, is unblockable as well. Hits full of gimmicks, man. <laughs> but just that kind of thing in general. People are going to learn eventually, and then you're going to have to actually develop real, legitimate offense instead of they don't know what they're seeing, so it's just going to work no matter what. Right? So we'll see where the game ends up there. Um, so after all that, after all that assist talk, I think that 
solo character potential is a bit too low. And I should kind of, you know, asterisk this up by saying that that is not present when you are in the middle of Sparking Blast. Which creates this weird dynamic where it's like, if you don't use, uh, if you don't hold on to your Sparking Blast, you're kind of fucked. Like, basically, I can kind of see it at the moment where it's essentially, you'll use Sparking Blast if it guarantees that you're going to knock out your opponent and that's going to end the round. Or alternatively, you hang on to it until you have level 3 Sparking Blast. Because otherwise you're putting yourself at an immediate disadvantage. Because if you do get knocked down to three to one character, what the hell are you going to do? Where What solo mix-up do a lot of characters have? Right? Overhead. You have the universal overhead. Which, you can without Sparking Blast, you cannot confirm off of it. You can't even cancel it into anything. You can't super cancel it, can't special cancel it, can't nothing with it. But if you're in Sparking Blast, you can dash cancel it and get a full hit confirm off of it. Vanish. If you're not in Sparking Blast, you're not doing shit off of it. Uh, super Dash. If you're not in Sparking Blast, you're just going to get knocked out of it. Or punished for it. You know, like, whatever. I shouldn't say... I need to not say punished. You're going to get... You're going to be at a disadvantage after you use it. Like, there's just so many things that... I just... I can't see a solo character ever making a comeback on a good player right now and that's a really awkward position because that's only if sparking blast is not in the picture and that creates a nightmare to balance because if you if you make solo characters better then sparking blast by nature is going to improve them even further to the point where maybe it makes them overpowered maybe it makes them unstoppable and now you create an x-factor level three scenario where it's like they pop that shit and suddenly your pants are brown instead of blue you know, like, it's very, very frightening if that kind of element is in the game. And so that leads me to my next point. Sparking Blast lasts too long at level 3. It lasts, like, what, 30 seconds or some nonsense if you pop that at level 3? It lasts way too long. But, in the current state of the game, it's almost a necessity. Because, again, if you're left with one character, what else can you do? You're so limited without that sparking blast that you almost need it to last that long to give you a snowball's chance in hell to come out on the other side and, you know, get a victory. But, if you make the normal offensive potential of characters better overall, then you might not have to worry about that. And then that all comes back to the very first point. If you make the offensive potential of characters better, you need a push block. Make the characters better, make the options better, put in a push block, we got a game. That's all. That's all I gotta say. Uh, so anyway. But it's actually really weird how Sparking Blast works. I should go into um, and figure this out exactly, because obviously it's not the same in story mode, because you have far more health in story mode than you do normally. But there have been many scenarios where somebody, or either I or the opponent have popped Sparking Blast, and during certain level 3s, it goes back to that whole thing that I was talking about earlier in regard to the cinematic uh, stuff. During certain level 3s, I actually got health. I gained health from a level 3. Because think about it. Think about 16s. I think there's like one point in time where there's an actual freeze of the health recovery during his level 3, and I believe that's during the very initial grab. But then, like, he slams you into the ground, he pulls his hands off, he fires his lasers, explosion happens, you get hard knocked down to the ground. That's like a five-second animation, all said and done. During that entire time, you're recovering blue health. And supers only do blue health as damage, for whatever reason. It doesn't cut off a percentage. 100% of the damage done from supers is left as blue health. So, again, there have been times... In story mode, where either I've been using 16, and uh, the opponent has more health after the level 3 than they did beforehand, same thing on my end. And this happens with other level 3s as well, so I need to figure out if that actually happens um, outside of just story mode. Because again, obviously in story mode, you're dealing with people who have like twice, three times the amount of health versus just default health. I'm not sure. But... It would really suck if that is actually the case. I mean, and we've seen it too, where like somebody gets level 3 in the middle of a real match and they have like 25% of their health left, right? 
Easy level three kill. Level three, raw level threes usually do about 40% of their life. But then they're just recovering health. They're recovering and they're recovering and they're recovering and all of it gets put at blue health. So once the level three is over, they're back exactly where they started, except your opponent has three less meter. <laughs> it's a really weird scenario. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. That, that's just everything that I've kind of observed so far, all of my thoughts on it. Uh, I'm sure that's all going to develop further as I play more. Like, I haven't played a lot of matches, and even if I had, the level of competition right now, especially online, is so useless to, like, make truly definitive observations about the state of the game and where it can lead that this is all basically assumption. And just, you know, this is kind of where I see these things heading. Um, so, again, if you have any, any kind of counterpoints, let me know. I want to hear them. And with that, I'm out, done talking, I've been speaking for long enough, peace.